Hey guys, so it's Thursday 30th of June. The guys don't have any racing today. So I was going to do a Q&A, answering some of the questions about the trip so far. So first question, uh, what helmets are the guys using? So last year we were using Bell helmets. This year the guys are on a helmet from Devel. It's called the Airblade Neo. So Devel is the brand that make our bikes, obviously, but then they also have some other gear, one of which is the helmet. So the guys are using a custom printed, logoed up, Devel Airblade Neo, that's the helmet. Where do you find the schedule for the crits? So the schedule for the crits are all on the Dutch cycling website. So knwu.nl. If you, you can look, browse the calendar without creating an account, but I find it's easier just to create an account on there. Then you can go to calendar over here, Google Chrome auto translates it to English. And then you can go through and just go through um, all the days that you're um, potentially looking to race and seeing what's on. So for example, tour of Bever Week, if I click that, it's got the the one we can enter. So the one we can enter is uh, Promise Elite and Professional B uh, Men. That's the category I'm looking for. So I went through all the dates we were here, basically clicked on every single race and looked for the ones that had this category. And those were the ones we'd be able to start. After I went through all the dates that we were here and found all the races we could possibly enter, the way I found where we should stay to get access to most of the races was I used this website called Map Customizer where you can bulk enter all the towns that the races are in. So I just bulk entered all the towns in so I dropped a pin on all of them. And then I was looking for accommodation that was as close as possible to the, most of the races. So you can see there's, there's a, a few around here. Um, also keeping in mind, we were going to be doing racing in Belgium, which is down here and one race in France, uh, over here. So I knew we wanted, you know, even if you're staying up here, you could get access to racing. It was going to be a long drive to get to these pro camisas. So I ended up picking accommodation that was, uh, down here around this area. So it gives us access to all of these crits and then these ones down here. I'm not sure if this was the, the, the final map, but you can get the idea. That's how I decided where the most appropriate place for us to stay would be. Nero shoes, yes. So I designed some custom Nero Continental high tops for the guys to order um, for the team. I'll go grab them. So I didn't have plans on doing this. I was actually printing up some gear for work um, using a print-on-demand service and saw that they had shoes and I was like, well, <laughs> I have to have a crack at printing up some shoes. So this is them here. So it's like a, the purple uh, Nero textured background and then just like the UCI logo, the Nero um, spiral logo thing and then just a Nero on the inside. So it's a print-on-demand shoe. Uh, also the, the, the N on the middle of the tongue. Pretty cool, hey? I really rate them. I reckon that they look really good walking around with the team kit on. They really stand out. It would be really cool to sell these, um, which is possible, but all these designs are owned by the team. So I can't just go and start selling the shoe. So if you do want to buy the shoe, go harass the team on their Instagram page. Uh, let the guys know that there's interest in buying them and we can look at, you know, maybe selling them. Why are you not part of the race? I mentioned this in the Amsterdam club race video, but uh, between me still working while I'm over here doing my coaching work, plus then managing the guys, plus then making these videos on top of that, it's impossible to train and race. Technically, I could go and race, but it's just not feasible to do the amount of training I'd need to do to race at a decent level. So that's why I'm not racing. I don't have time. Are Cooper Sayers or Sam Hill there? Uh, no, so if you follow the team, you probably realize there are a few riders that aren't here. Sam Hill works as a teacher, so it was hard for him to get the time off. And also just the cost of coming over here was sort of prohibitive for him. So he wasn't able to make the trip. And Cooper Sayers, unfortunately, isn't with Nero Continental anymore. So Cooper joined St. Piran, the UK-based Continental team, uh, with a mid-season transfer. So he'll be racing with them for the rest of this year. So uh, good luck to Cooper over there. Uh, yeah, but it means, unfortunately, he's not with us here on this trip, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, all the best to Cooper. Uh, two COVID-related questions, comments. So first one is, you guys are negative from co already from COVID. Uh, yeah, so for those of us that had COVID, we were all testing negative for it and we're feeling better after four days. So over in here in the Netherlands, you got to do a five-day isolation. Uh, we were feeling better and all tested negative after four days. So we're all recovered pretty quickly. So this comment here, stop testing. If you feel sick, just isolate and get better. 
Uh, I kind of agree with that sentiment, but the reason why we were testing is because, well, mainly from a physical performance point of view, if you have symptomatic COVID, there are some potential implications down the line when you start training again. So it's useful to know if you're sick, if it's COVID or if it's just a cold, and sometimes it can be hard to tell. Uh, so that's the main reason why we're testing. And also I would feel really bad if I was sick uh, and it was COVID and we're just walking around spreading it to everyone. So if you're sick, I still think you should test. And if it's COVID, just follow the isolation protocols. Um, it's really not that bad here. It was like five days, it's fine. This question might take a little longer to answer. So Richard says, um, would be interested in how you manage to organize the trip. So sponsors, cost, time off work for riders, race entry, etc. So I'm gonna get into that now. Let's go through one by one. Sponsors, okay, so this trip is predominantly funded by the riders. So the stuff that the team covers for this trip is the riders insurance to be on a Conti team and actually well, just to be racing overseas, but being on a Conti team, the, the team covers the insurance cost, which is pretty expensive. I think it's, it's over $1,000 per rider uh, to get the sports insurance to cover the racing. So the team paid for that for the riders. The team also agreed to contribute some money towards fuel costs for the vehicles. Whether we'll need that money between some of the start money we get and prize money is yet to be figured out, but there is that on the table. So in the grand scheme of things, to be honest, the team didn't contribute that much, but the sort of hidden benefit behind the backing of the team is that they're running the team as a continental team. And being a continental team means that we get access to these bigger races, which most of the UCI races actually give you give the team some start money. So I think one of the races was giving us 200 euros, another one was 400 euros, and another one was 500 euros. Now I haven't managed a team over here before at a UCI race, so I don't know if we'll actually ever see that money, but it is in the contracts with the races that there is some compensations for us as a team to go to these UCI races. So there is a bit of money coming back. So this racing is relatively cheap for the team. It's not the case for the riders. So for example, riders are paying their flights to get over here and back, which was about, for me, I think the flights were $2,300 return. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm splitting the cost with the riders too. I'm basically, this trip is costing the same for me as the team manager it is uh, for the riders because I'm, I'm a volunteer. Uh, accommodation, we, we are staying in a single accommodation, one house, which I think was 11,000 Australian dollars split between seven or eight of us. So the accommodation ended up being about uh, $1,500 each for six weeks, which is really cheap when you work out the length of time we're here. It's a pretty good deal. So flights, accommodation, you're looking for each rider between three and a half and four thousand dollars um, to attend the trip. So the two vehicles, we've got a car and a van. They are from Ben's girlfriend, Nana, who I introduced in the, the, the previous video. Her father, I think, owns a used car dealership. So we were very lucky uh, over in Germany, so we were very lucky that they were able to. We were able to get the car and the van for free for six weeks. Which, if we didn't have that, I don't know what we'd do because that would just be prohibitively expensive to rent uh, a Lisa car for that amount of time. So she really saved the day in terms of getting the vehicle. So. We don't have any vehicle expenses besides the fuel. Other good thing is race entries are all free. So all these crits are free to enter, the pro camisas are free to enter, the UCI races are free to enter, and actually we may get some money from the races. So the race, in terms of the racing, is actually free. So other part of this question was time off work for riders. So actually no one really works. I'm the only one that works full time on the team and I can do that remotely, which helps. So we've got Miles, who's an electrician, who uh, he worked part time anyway and just took the time off work. Uh, most of the other guys are in uni. Um, and you know, cause most of the guys are in their early 20s. So it's not really taking time off work and stuff isn't really much of an issue. So um, that's not too hard. Just before I filmed this video, I went to the supermarket and I filmed a couple of clips. Cause I want to show you some of the interesting food options that are available in the Dutch supermarkets. Plan tonight's fish. Um, Rice or with like baked potatoes or mashed potatoes and with a bit of veggies or a salad. So they have these fresh squeezed orange juice things here. I've been going through like a bottle every two days, it's so good.
three euros for a bottle. Pretty good, I reckon. John is on a juice cleanse because he had about five kilos of sushi <laughs> yesterday. How much did you guys spend each at the sushi place? We were like 35 euros each. <laughs> All you can eat, buffet sushi. <laughs> So the cereal sections in the supermarkets are always quite small. Like that's it. Just from from there to there is all the cereal. Whereas in Australia it'd be like an entire aisle. Um, the cereal I like is this one. Puffer juice. It's like a Biscoff rice bubbly flavoured thing. Really good. So these are really good for writing too. It's like a spiced loaf. They come in packs of five. So each one of these is 65 grams of carbs. So if you're going for a ride, you just take one slice per hour. So three hours, pull three off, stick them in your pocket, and you're good, good to go, sorted. Very handy. Well, you got a pack, Lucky. Two. Two packs. And waffles. Damn, so they've sold out of the gels, um, but at the Yombo, there's this sports mix, and then there's also gels too. But this is like not a standard Gatorade sort of thing. This is a proper mix that the guys will use in races. So proper um, carb ratios, electrolytes. Pretty cool for a home brand Yumbo product. And they also have gels that are a similar mix. So that is pretty cool. Legit sports product. As usual, that is it for this video. Next video will be Belgium Pro Camise Racing. That'll be coming up on Saturday night. So I'll catch you in that one.